I have struggled for days trying to figure out how to introduce this guy, and here's the best I've come up with. Ready? The artist formerly known, and now known once again, as Prince. That's the best I can come up with. Lord have mercy. <laughs> That's it, huh? That's all I can come up with. All right. Because otherwise, it would have taken me 20 minutes. It would have taken me the whole show to introduce you because you are so phenomenal. So thanks for coming to see me. I appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate it. it. Yeah. Let me start with this Grammy thing. First of all, you rocked the Grammy. Yeah. That was an amazing performance. Did you enjoy it? Loved it. Loved yeah. it. Yeah. I was scared when I heard that you were going to do this thing with Beyonce. Mm -hmm. And I was scared, as I told you, because you were such all that by yourself. I was afraid that it wasn't going to come off right. Even though I love Beyonce, she's very talented. I was just afraid that Prince can't do nothing with nobody else. He's got to do his thing because he's Prince. But it came off okay. Oh, I've, um, I pride myself on working with great musicians. And mm -hmm. I consider her to be as such. And she's an mm -hmm. amazing talent. She's a real deal. Mm -hmm. So she just fell right into it. There was mm -hmm. no problem whatsoever. How did, how, how did that performance come about? I mean, you decided to do whatever you want to do on your own terms. But how did that actually come to be? Well, the producer, Ken Ehrlich, had been uh, hounding me every year to do something. And uh, this year we have uh, a new record coming out, so, uh, and a tour is scheduled. So I thought if this was, uh, if this was going to be the year, then I want to do something special. Uh -huh. Then the uh, notion of working with Beyonce came about, and that made it extra special, because uh -huh. I'm such a fan. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's nice for, for Prince to be a fan of your stuff. Yeah. Speaking of being a fan, as you well know, and I, I can't even hide it, I'm a fan of your stuff. And I guess a couple weeks ago, I went to Vegas to see you, not in one show, but two shows. And you got to stop doing these things at 2 and 3 in the morning, because <laughs> I can't stay up two days in a row. Well, see, that's how I tell who's <laughs> real and who ain't. <laughs> Am I authentic now? Yeah, you are. Am I real now? Yeah, that's why I'm here. I'm glad to hear that. Then. All right. So if I can stay up at 2 and 3 in the morning, yeah, just so. not, not not, not to see you go off stage. I mean, coming on at 2 a.m., <laughs> coming <laughs> on at 3 a.m., right. and playing to 5, 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, but there, there, I stood and watched that audience in, in Vegas, Prince, and there are two or three things that stand out to me about your audience in particular. One, you have the absolute most diverse audience of any artist, no pun intended, that I've ever hung out with or experienced in concert consistently what is it about you or about your music? I mean, I've seen the black thing and the white t thing and the Motown thing had the black folk and the white folk listening, but you have the most ethnically, culturally, racially diverse audience, I think, of any artist on the scene. Wh why, why you? I think um, from the beginning, uh, as I was coming into my own uh, persona and understanding of who I was, I never talked down to my audience. Mm -hmm. And when you don't talk down to your audience, then they can grow with you. And uh, I give them uh, a lot of credit uh, to be able to hang with me this long because I've gone through a lot of changes. But they've allowed me to grow, and thus um, we can tackle some serious subjects and uh, try to just be better human beings, mm -hmm. all of us. You know. The other thing that strikes me about your audience that's uniquely different um, is that your audience is very musically sophisticated. It's one thing mm -hmm. to love music. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to have an audience of fans that is really very sophisticated about music. Yeah, a lot, lot, of, uh, lot of the people that come see us now, um, their parents listen to real music, mm -hmm. real songwriting, real uh, musicianship, and uh, they respect somebody who takes their craft seriously. And I grew up that way, so I, you know, when we do our shows, I try to have the best musicians I can find with me at that particular time. And uh, like I said, we don't play down to them. We don't, um, you know, we're just not, it's just not about a party, you know. That's going to be anyway, if it's good music. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, 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 have to ch you have to challenge them. And I, I think that's lacking in music mm -hmm. today. You have changed, as you said a moment ago, and evolved in so many ways and have, has gone, have gone through so many stages in your own career development. You said a moment ago that because of that, you like to do different things. It's very difficult oftentimes for a performer, for an artist to hang on to his or her audience when they're not doing the stuff that you know they want to hear. Mm -hmm. And you have a certain, and I say this with all, with all respect, uh, there's a certain arrogance about you <laughs> that, will come out on, that will come out on stage, and you know these folks don't pay their money, 
And you know they want to hear Little Red Corvette. You know they want to hear Delirious. You know they want to hear Purple Rain, 1999, everything else. But you come out and play what you want to play at that particular stage in your life. And for your true core fans, they don't ever leave disappointed. Yeah. Well, first of all, I don't know. I don't know who was the one that came up with the notion that you have to play the same songs every concert. I'd probably fans. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, most of the people that come see us now, they've been to see me umpteen times. And uh, the only pity is when they bring their kids and they're trying to show their kids the experience they had. Uh, but I don't know how any of us grow if we just, you know, tread water. Mm -hmm. The idea is that we keep growing, and uh, um, like we were saying before, the fan base I have now, they're so sophisticated, they almost expect me to do the unexpected, mm -hmm. and that gives me a lot of room to challenge myself as well as them. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've been dying to ask you about is this notion of whether or not you think too many performers, too many artists have become too racy and become so willing to sell a record that they will do just about anything to make that record sell. And I want to ask you that question specifically because you are the king, okay, the prince of raciness. Because back in the day, you were like, you, you, were, you were, I mean, I can't even call it pushing the envelope. You were really pushing the envelope back in the day. So what's your sense now of artists who've gotten in trouble of late pushing the envelope and, ex and being extremely racy for much yeah. of the American audience. Well, you know, everything's relative. First of all, um, uh, racy, back when I was quote unquote racy, as you say, I mean, it's pretty light now. I mean, if you take the words to Darling Nikki, which I got into a uh, little bit of hot water about back in 84, if you take those lyrics and read them now, it's a little different than, say, um, uh, the president of the RIAA reading the lyrics to one of these current hip hop songs mm -hmm. uh, at a congressional hearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, a, it's a lot different now. Uh, anytime you have to rely on just raciness alone, you know, you can only, uh, put it this way, you're going to get the audience you deserve. Mm. All right. So when we were wearing more risque outfits, we had a bunch of risque fans. That's right, in the audience. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, you know, when you're 21 years old, you, you know, you, you go and try stuff. Um, when you're 40, it's, you know, you don't want to be pulling out body parts. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's old skin. It's old see? skin, so yeah. So it's, it's different then, you know. You, yeah. you, you don't want to be showing all that then. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but we live in a world now, we live in a culture where artists and media conglomerates sell us. I just reading an article the other day in the LA Times uh, about this very issue that we get sold all this hype. We get all this hype gets pushed on us, and they're really selling events that really turn out to be non-events, oftentimes. Mm -hmm. Well, it's <laughs> it, once again you they they will get the audience and the consumer that they deserve. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a glut in the industry because of this thinking. You know, it's all bottom line. It's all real quick, the artist turnover rate is really fast, and uh, it's not a lot of substance. Mm -hmm. You know, there's n a lot of these kids don't know how to play music because they didn't uh, learn it. They, they, they weren't taught the art and the craft of songwriting, and it is an art, and uh, if you don't respect that, then, you know, we're going to get a lot of these non-events going mm -hmm. on. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm glad, but more importantly, the people who get a chance to play and work with you, I'm sure glad that over the years, speaking of playing instruments, that you got to be a little bit nicer and let somebody play on your record. Because when, when you first mm -hmm. broke, all songs written, produced, performed, lead vocals, background vocals, everything on the album was done by you. Yeah. Well, there again, uh, it, it's a situation where, you know, where people, if they want me to go back and do what I used to do, they have to understand that it's my body of work mm -hmm. and I'm trying to put in that body of work things that I haven't done so that when I finish and I look at all of it, it represents, you know, the whole complete pie as opposed to the Who, same thing over and over. Who's running the business now? Are, there's a big debate now with what, what just happened to L.A. Reid at mm -hmm. Arista, had more Grammy nominations on Grammy night than any other record label. Right. And they kicked him out of the building in New York with the quickness. Right. Can I at least go to the Grammys? Is and just, 
can I just? Yeah, well, it, it was nice that Outkast brought him up on stage. I mean, yeah. that was nice. They gave him some love. But the question is, who's running the business now? Are, are, are the creatives running it? Are the suits running it? What's the state of the business these days? Well, uh, that changed a long time ago when it became uh, merely bottom line. Um, you'll see, if you go back and you look at music, you'll see a big change when MTV came into the business. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say that they're running it. But that sort of mentality is what is king now. It's not about content and, and substance. You know, hip-hop is very diverse. But if you only focus on one uh, aspect of it, mm -hmm. then what you get is this image of black America that is completely contrary to what actually goes on. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I've never seen you in a jogging suit, you know fit and trim, but look at how you're dressed. Uh, the, the, the gatekeepers, they know who they are. We don't need to name names, but rest assured, they aren't, they aren't musicians. Mm -hmm. They don't have anything to do with music. And if you set one of them in the room and you ask them, what is it that you do? How did you get this job? A lot of them came from law. A lot of them came from accounting and things like that. They're merchants, basically. basically. Mm -hmm. And it's not to uh, uh, disrespect them or, or um, uh, demean their role in any way, but at the same time, you can't expect them to know who they're signing and, uh, and, and uh, uh, sort of gatekeep the, the music. Let me change gears on you dramatically, because I, I've, I've been dying to show this to you. I don't know if you've seen this or not. Maybe you have, but if you haven't, I want to show this to you. I went to see a movie the other day. And there was a clip in the movie that was absolutely hilarious. And I want, I want you to see this, and I want to ask you something about it. Uh, roll this clip for me. With all the problems we got, black folks used to can say, at least we ain't crazy. Our crimes made sense. Ain't got no money, rob somebody with some money. Simple as that. And y'all don't want to admit it, but black folks just as crazy as white folks. Mike Tyson, he's like three crazy people, man. Trent, hold on, hold on now. He had Cherokee or something. Don't put him in there with us. <laughs> Prince is half Cherokee. Don't put him in there with us. Did you see this? Uh, yeah. Was, was, did you laugh at this? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, there's a dispute <laughs> over who my grandfather was on my mother's side. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you, how do you and I, don't, I, don't, I don't know this even matters to you, but let me ask you anyway. What's your sense of how the public has viewed you as a personality over the years and how that has changed. I mean, do you, do you concern yourself with that? Are you conscious of how you have been viewed over the course of your career? Does it matter to you? What do you think about, what do you think about what people think of you, if you think about that at all? Mm, that's kind of, kind of a deep question. I, um, I, get, I get one every now and then. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm sort of like a... Um, you know, because of some of the stances that I take, mm -hmm. people are going to have different viewpoints of me depending upon which side of the fence they're sitting on. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a, like we were talking about the music industry, a merchant would have trouble being called a bean counter when in fact they know that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd be, uh, they'd be hard pressed though to try to sing a song with me. So uh, I don't really care so much what people say about me because it usually is a reflection of who they are. For example, if people wish I would sound like I used to sound, then it says more about them than it does me. If I change the lyrics to a song, then it begs the question, why do you want me to curse? Why do you want me to talk like other people? See, cursing was cool when nobody was doing it, <laughs> but just a couple people. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like if everybody wears the same clothes, right. then it's, you know, it ain't cool no more. You know, you, you, you're trying to be different. One can't be different by being racy today. Mm. It's not interesting anymore. See, sexiness was in the mind. It was in, in your imagination. When you lose that, then, you know, like I said, it's just old skin. <laughs> yeah. We've had a number of conversations over the years off, off camera, obviously, and you are a very, very politically astute, very much politically aware, a news junkie. Uh, mm -hmm. And I've often wondered why it is that as, as, interested, as, as interested as you are in the world that we live, um, and with all this happening in the world, 
um, what your thoughts are specifically in this election year, economically, politically, socially. I'm asking a broad question to give you room to play with here, but, but tell me something about your political views uh, in this particular and all important election year. Well, first of all, I, I think just the word political and politics and all that is just semantics. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, an equal share of economic uh, wherewithal is uh, desirable by all. I mean, we, we all just want to take care of our families and do it to the best of our abilities and see the world. People want to travel and things like that. A lot of people that I know haven't even been out of the United States. Um, so I, I, I consider myself more of a spiritual person than I do political. I, I'm, I'm more concerned with uh, the truth more concerned with why people won't adhere to it and why they see themselves as uh, uh, us against them. I used to think that we were the ones that came up with that. But see, we didn't start a lot of these wars. Mm -hmm. uh, we certainly don't want to go to them. Yeah. A lot has been written, uh, and I shouldn't even say written, but there's been a lot of conjecture, a lot of conversation in the country uh, about your spiritual evolution of late. Curious anything about that? Um, well, uh, your spiritual journey? Yeah, I'd say a, a big change happened for me in the year 2000 because I, um, uh, I went back to using my name again. Uh, I and thank you for that, because it's hard yeah. trying, to, trying to say what that symbol <laughs> was. Yeah, well there was a purpose for that and right. um, recently Anita Baker called me uh, and we spoke about uh, her view of me writing slave on my face at the time. She said she didn't understand it at the time, but right after that she had a lot of wars with the, her particular record company and she's free now and she owns her masters now mm -hmm. so uh, she says to me uh, you know I didn't understand it then but I do now mm -hmm. I get it uh, like I said in the year 2000 uh, once I changed my name back and the war was finished with uh, you know, my uh, so-called enemies mm -hmm. I am um, I started reading the Bible intensely, and I come to find out that this is, this is the truth. Yeah. Well, by any name, you're a bad man. All right. And I thank you for coming to see me, and you've got to come back and do this again. Yes, sir. You've got a lot to say, and you've got to come, come, come say it more regularly. Definitely. All right. I'll hold you to that. All right. Nice to see you. Up next, a very special acoustic performance. Uh, we talked in this conversation about how he can play just about every instrument and plays all kinds of music. and. His audience of fans appreciates a variety of music, but uh, I've asked him to come on tonight and to do something a little different than what he normally does. I love that Grammy thing, but what you are about to hear now will blow you away. So stay tuned for a very special acoustic performance by Prince. <music> to close out the show tonight, here's Prince and the very talented Wendy Melvoin performing Reflection. Two sevens together Like tongue indefinite Try to catch the glass Before it falls Without a frown Can you turn up the stereo Wanna play this old song? It's about love. Can I do that? Did we remember to water the plants today? I forgot to look up at the moon because I was too busy. Yes, I was too busy. Nice to know that uh, when bodies wear out, we can get another. What does that one thing have to do with the other one? I don't know. I was just thinking about my 
mother You know what? Turn the stereo back down Ain't nothing worse than an old time love song Do you like my hair this way? Remember all the way back in the day When we would compare who's afro was the roundest Mirror tiles Above the bed Fishing nets and posters all over the walls Oh yeah Sometimes I just wanna go out You know what I mean Play my guitar Just watch all the cars go by As with any Prince appearance, there's always a little something unexpected at the end. So here's a sneak preview and a world premiere of Prince's latest music video. The song is Musicology. Enjoy, good night, and keep the faith.